When will we be safe from COVID-19? How much longer should we be mandated to stay in our homes? When should our schools open? These are just a handful of questions I've been bombarded with when it comes to the future of living with COVID-19. We've been talking to Jessica, who is terrified that she is going to die if she does, in fact, contract coronavirus, COVID-19. Now, joining us is Dr. Dina Grayson. She is a medical doctor, a scientist, and an expert on deadly pandemic diseases. In fact, she helped develop a broad-spectrum antiviral medicine to fight against Ebola and other deadly viruses. Uh, Dr. Grayson, it's good to talk to you again. How are you? Well, thanks for having me, Dr. Phil. I'm uh, doing well, all things considered, but it's obviously a difficult time for everyone. It is a difficult time. And um, I've, um, you've been listening to my conversation uh, so far, correct? Yes, I have. Um, Absolutely. A, a delightful woman, Jessica, and she seems like a, a, a great mom and, a, and a, a great wife, but she is really experiencing some uh, panic disorders and all, and does have a compromised immune system and does not have a spleen. And she's assuming then that she is more susceptible to contracting coronavirus or COVID-19 than everyone else. Is that actually true? Well, Dr. Phil and Jessica, I mean, this is a new virus, so we have to sort of couch it in those terms. But in general, um, people like Jessica who don't have a spleen are more susceptible to certain types of infection and specifically for encapsulated bacteria. So something like strep, which unfortunately, you know, her brother had and passed away from. Uh, there's other types of these encapsulated bacteria. They basically kind of have a little um, mucus shield around them. But this, this virus is different and it's not an encapsulated bacteria, it's a virus. <clears throat> so in general, the experts think that um, folks without spleens Although you potentially, of course, still have this specific type of immunodeficiency that Jessica and others that don't have spleens aren't really felt to be at increased risk to catch the virus, the coronavirus, and aren't felt to be at increased risk to have really serious illness, COVID-19 illness. Now, the concern is, is that sometimes folks that get COVID-19, which is the illness caused by this coronavirus, can get what's called a secondary bacterial infection. So in Jessica's case, that's what would be the concern is that if she got COVID-19, that she, she would be at increased risk if she got a secondary bacterial infection with one of these special kinds of encapsulated bacteria. Is it safe to say that Jessica, if she gets COVID-19, that this is not an absolute no question death sentence for her and that if she continues her very vigilant uh, steps that she's taking we can talk about some others she could take that this is something that she can survive that she's not necessarily going to die in this or another wave of this coronavirus if she's vigilant i i think that i think that's fair to say you know, so, but it's certainly not a death sentence. I mean, we all have to be vigilant. Jessica has to be much more vigilant than perhaps I do or Dr. Phil, maybe you do, but it doesn't, you know, I don't think that Jessica should walk around thinking, my God, that, you know, the sword of Damocles is hanging over my head and I'm going to die tomorrow either. Because look, you know, you've got to have a good immune system to make sure that if, you know, if you are in contact with this virus, that you can fight it off at the beginning. Jessica, do you hear what she's saying? I do. And just hearing her say all of that actually makes me feel a lot better. It has actually like felt like a lift, a weight was lifted off of my shoulders just hearing her say that. 